You are welcome to the Messiah Revelation channel. We are an end time prophetic channel. And today we are looking at some issues that uh, Hebrew Israelites have with Gentiles. And we are going to address them. And preliminary comments need to be made. And the comments are that salvation belongs to both Hebrews and Gentiles. And it's very clear. It's very clear from the scriptures. Uh, you can look at John 3.16. For God so loved the world, and he gave his only begotten son, who Soever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. I was watching a video some time ago, and the person making the video made a comment. And the comment is that it is only Hebrews, Hebrew Israelites, who can be saved. And so when the scripture talks about whosoever, the scripture is talking about whosoever among the Hebrew Israelites that believe in the Messiah will be saved. Um, that interpretation of the scripture is wrong. It's a false theology. Uh, for you to teach that only Hebrew Israelites will be saved is a false theology. John 3, 16 is very clear. Whosoever believes in the Messiah will be saved. It includes both uh, Hebrews and Gentiles. Um, it doesn't mean that you just have to believe in uh, the Messiah. And some people would think that just believing the Messiah is enough. Um, you have to repent of your sins. Repentance from sin is very important. And here it applies to both uh, Hebrews and Gentiles. And so let, it, let us be clear that salvation belongs both to Hebrews and also to Gentiles, those Gentiles, those Hebrews who believe in the Messiah. You can also look at the opposite side of the scripture. Whosoever believes in the Messiah, and so if you are a Hebrew Israelite, you don't believe in the Messiah, then there's a question mark about your salvation. Uh, because the scriptures in John is also very clear. Uh, John 3 verse 36, uh, for those who do not believe in the Messiah, they are already condemned. And that scripture applies both to Hebrews and Gentiles because the Messiah is the standard of salvation. Uh, as chapter 4 verse um, 12 says that there's no name in heaven, uh, under heaven on earth, in the sea, under the sea, where you can get salvation except the name of Yeshua, our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. And so for both Hebrews and Gentiles, salvation is available and both Hebrews and Gentiles are redeemable. So John chapter 3 verse uh, 16, John chapter 3 verse 36 uh, apply both to uh, Hebrew Israelites and also uh, to the Gentiles. The Old Testament is very clear that uh, Gentiles uh, will be saved. Uh, not all Gentiles will be saved, and not all Hebrew Israelites will be saved. Uh, I don't know of any scripture that states that all Hebrew Israelites will be saved. Um, will be saved uh, in the sense of entering the kingdom of the Most High. The scriptures in Matthew is very clear. Uh, the Messiah used so many parables. And he used the parable of the ten virgins, and five of them um, were able to enter the kingdom, but five were not um, able to enter the kingdom. 
the Mesa also used um, the parable um, of the um, the parable of the feast, um, the the rich man who uh, made a feast and he um, sent outside people from outside to come and they didn't come some of them didn't have time at all and these are the people um, who were supposed to have come for the feast and these are the people who are supposed to enter the kingdom they refused to come to the feast and so the um, the, the, the rich man sent for people to go uh, throughout the streets and get people to come for the feast and so strangers were able to come uh, to the feast and um, they enjoy the feast so it means that when the kingdom comes um, some Hebrew Israelites uh, they will not enter the kingdom because they will not have listened to the call the call for the feast and Revelation 19 verse 9 is very clear blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb those who are invited the marriage supper of the lamb is not for everybody it's for those who are invited the selection of the 144,000 is not for everybody the selection is based upon a criteria that only the Lord knows 12,000 each from um, each of the 12 tribes of Israel and so let's be very clear that the scripture says that salvation does not belong only to the Hebrew Israelites and even if you look at Isaiah chapter 11 where the Messiah will gather the Hebrew Israelites who are scattered over the world uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 11 verse 10 says that the Gentiles will seek him that the Messiah will be an ensign of his people and the Gentiles will seek him Isaiah says it very clear that the Messiah will be a light unto the Gentiles and Isaiah chapter 46 also talks about the Hebrew Israelites being a light unto uh, the Gentiles and so it's very clear that uh, the Gentiles um, will be saved of course it's not all Gentiles who will be saved it's not all Hebrew Israelites who will be saved um, you can look at the scriptures Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 to 21 talks about people who are excluded from salvation first uh, Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 talks about people who are excluded from salvation and Revelation chapter 22 verse 15 also talks about people who were found to be outside the gates of heaven Apostle John saw them they were outside the gates of heaven it means they could not enter the kingdom and these people will include both Hebrew Israelites and also Gentiles uh, if you know of a scripture that says that all Hebrew Israelites will be saved um, you should let me know and if you know of a scripture that says that no Gentile will be saved you should also let me know the position is that both Hebrew Israelites and Gentiles will be saved those who believe in the Messiah and obey the commandment they repent of their sins and they um, are holy and they meet the criteria the criteria um, outlined in uh, 1st Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 and also Galatians uh, chapter 5 verses 19 to 21 if you look at Isaiah 41 uh, the prophet is talking about the restoration of the Hebrew Israelites and the prophet is very clear that strangers shall be joined with them and shall um, 
they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. The Messiah will gather the outcasts of Israel and the dispersed of Judah from all the four corners of the earth. Isaiah 14 verse 1. And the prophet is saying that strangers will be joined to them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. It means that uh, some Gentiles uh, will be saved. And this position is consistent with uh, the scripture. Um, here, let's look at Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. Um, Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. The prophet, um, the apostle John saw a great multitude uh, who were dressed in white robes. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. After this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hand. And the prophet. Uh, the Apostle John saw a multitude of people who were wearing uh, white garments, uh, they had white robes, and they stood before the throne of the Most High. No sinner, um, nothing that is unclean can enter the kingdom. And uh, These people um, entered the kingdom, and Apostle John saw them, they were saved, and they were from all nations it is not only from israel all nations and all kindreds all people uh, all races uh, black and white and tongues different languages hebrew swahili english um, chinese russian all languages and tongues and they were clothed with white robes and palms in their hand. And Apostle John could not understand um, the identity of these people. And so he asked, he asked the angel. And the angel told him, um, the angel says, told Apostle John, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. They washed their, their robes and they have been cleansed and they were from different nations, different tribes, uh, different kindred. And since I mentioned the word white in um, Revelation chapter 17 uh, revelation chapter 7 uh, verse 14 and let me repeat um, the people who were in white robes these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb uh, some people interpret white meaning that um, white people i think it's very it's a very juvenile interpretation of the Bible, and it's a blasphemous interpretation of the Bible. Revelation is very clear. Don't add anything to it, and don't take anything away from it. And so, if you say that white people will be saved because white is a symbol of salvation, uh, you are wrong. If you say black people will be damned because black is a symbol of damnation, uh, you will be wrong. Um, I'm making this comment because uh, some people use that as indicating that um, white is a symbol of salvation. Uh, in the same way, when they interpret the white hair of the Messiah, to signify that the Messiah um, is a white person. Um, it's a wrong interpretation of the Bible. And so going back to uh, our analysis here, uh, salvation belongs to both um, Hebrews and Gentiles. 
And salvation belongs to people from all races, from all colors. And so what is the implication? The implication is that um, Hebrew Israelites, uh, you have an obligation to pray for the Gentiles. Why do you have to pray for them? You pray for them because they are redeemable. And some of them would cleave to the house of Jacob. And some of them would be the strangers who would cleave to uh, the house of Jacob. And you are under obligation to be a light unto the Gentiles. Uh, to be a light unto the Gentiles means that you have to uh, set an example for uh, the Gentiles. Uh, if they give you a food that is offered to idols, don't take the food. And you remember how your brother Daniel, um, he set an example unto uh, the Gentiles. Uh, your brothers uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, their, na their names were changed, but uh, they set an example unto the Gentile kings. Um, they could not uh, compromise with regard to the God that they worship, even to the point of martyrdom. And they were thrown into the fiery furnace uh, on account of their belief in uh, the God that they serve. And this is what you have to do. You have to be a light unto the Gentiles wherever you are. Uh, you'll be scattered or you're already scattered into uh, Gentile nations. You are in a pagan nations, but you need to be a light unto them. A salvation is not only for the Hebrews, it's also for the Gentiles. And salvation is a gift. It's a gift that comes from our Lord and Savior. Salvation is from God and also from the Lamb of God, as, as it is written in Revelation uh, chapter uh, 7, verse 10. Remember the stories in the Bible that um, Rahab, a high lot, a prostitute, and she was saved. And Hebrews chapter uh, 11, verse 31 talks about a high lot, a prostitute, uh, who was saved uh, because he had faith in the God of the Hebrews. Um, so it's very clear um, that we have to accept the fact, the biblical fact that salvation belongs both to uh, Hebrews and also to non-Hebrews. Uh, of course, the Lord has a covenant with the Hebrews. Um, they are set apart and the Hebrews Israelites are those who are still scattered uh, all over the world and um, they were sent uh, in ships, they were scattered in ships, they are still scattered all over the world and some of them believe that um, they are the only people who are redeemable and that is wrong because the scripture is very clear that Gentiles are also redeemable you remember the story of Colonius. Uh, he was a Gentile. Uh, he was a Roman military officer, probably a white person. But the Lord sent Apostle Peter to go to him, to talk to him about salvation. And he was the first Gentile to be saved. Uh, the books of us is very clear. Wherever you are, you have to be a light unto the Gentiles because the Gentiles are also redeemable. And talking about uh, the Gentiles, uh, you need to pray for them and you need to uh, preach to them and you need to explain the Bible to them. You do it uh, diplomatically. Uh, it is not very easy. Um, I'm ending the message by telling you a story that uh, came to my attention a um, few weeks ago. A Nigerian nurse working in the United Kingdom, uh, she had a patient, and the patient was 
and very sick, he was dying. So this nurse prayed for the patient, said prayers for the patient. Um, she's a Christian. And the Bible is very clear that you need to intercede for people who are sick, uh, those who are in trouble. You need to pray. And the book of James is very clear that the prayers of the righteous is, is very, very important um, for uh, saving souls and healing uh, diseases and uh, interceding for people. The nurse prayed for the, the patient in the hospital and she was fired. The authorities fired her. Why? For praying for a patient. It is not part of a job to pray for a patient. You are bringing your religion to the job. And the, your job as a nurse does not include you praying for a patient. Don't bring your religion to the workplace. In other words, don't bring the Bible to the workplace. Don't bring the message of salvation to the workplace. So two things happened. Uh, she was fired, the Nigerian lady, the nurse, who prayed for her patient in the hospital was fired and um, she was also uh, deported. So you know the risk, the risk involved in being a light unto the Gentiles. You'll be preaching on the streets and you will be claiming that you are a Hebrew Israelite and you will be citing the Bible and somebody will call a police on you. And you'll be uh, distributing tracts, Christian tracts, uh, on the streets and somebody will call uh, police on you and you, be, you, you, you will tell the truth that you are Hebrew Israelite and you were scattered because of uh, prophecy and somebody will not believe you, he, he will look at you, you, he will look at the color of your skin and he will call police on you and if you are on the job you will be terminated. And you remember the case of Carrie Ivan, um, a basketball player uh, in the United States who tweeted a link on a book written by Ronald Dutton, Hebrews to Negroes. For doing that, he was uh, suspended. And so you have a long way to go, but you should, you should continue because you have an obligation to save um, you are brothers and sisters who are in hell, and you have an obligation who are going to hell. Um, you have an obligation also to uh, get the Gentiles who are going to hell. Um, it is your father's business to save both Hebrews and Gentiles. And Jude 23, Jude chapter 1, verse 23 says that you have an obligation to save people uh, who are going to hell and don't limit yourself only to hebrew israelites because both hebrew israelites and gentiles are redeemable they are entitled to um, salvation so you have to have that mentality as you um, continue to be a light unto the gentiles it was for this purpose that our brother uh, Paul was appointed as an apostle unto the Gentiles. Our Messiah came to be a light unto the Gentiles. He came to be a light, uh, not only to the Hebrews, but also to the Gentiles, and particularly a light unto the Gentiles as stated in Isaiah uh, chapter uh, 60. Thank you for watching this video and spread the message and continue to be a light unto the Gentiles, those who will accept the offer of salvation uh, so that they can cleave to the house of Jacob. Thank you for watching this video.